We are talking Radford Highlanders basketball and Big South today with third-year head coach Darius Nichols as this team gets set to open the season against North Carolina. Let's get into it. You are Locked On College Basketball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, folks? Welcome into the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, a daily national college hoop show, part, of course, of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Andy Patton. Today's episode of Locked On College Basketball is brought to you by Prize Picks. So, folks, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Use that promo code locked on college, and you'll get a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. Well, I am thrilled to be joined today by Darius Nichols. Darius is the head coach entering his third season of the Radford Highlanders, coming off a 21-win season and a semifinals appearance in the CBI last year. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show and, and help us preview this program in this season. Andy, I appreciate you having me. Yeah, I, it's an exciting year, exciting year last year for this team. And the first thing that kind of stuck out to me when when looking at you know the schedule and, and the the roster and everything going on with this program is that you guys are tipping off in Chapel Hill against the Tar Heels, heading over to, yeah. uh, to iconic venue, iconic program, and, and looked at your schedule last year. And last year you played Marquette, you played Notre Dame, you played Kansas State, of course, a team that uh, had a tremendous amount of success last year. And uh, I know as somebody who, who follows a lot of mid-major basketball that, that sometimes even just getting opportunities to play teams like that can be difficult. So for you, what, what does it mean to – to have played those games last year during what was obviously a successful season and now get the opportunity uh, to play in North Carolina. You also got West Virginia, your alma mater's on the schedule, Clemson. Like, what does it mean for you to be able to, to schedule those kinds of opponents in the non-conference? It, it means a lot to us because, I mean, we want to play, you know, we want to play high-level opponents. And mm -hmm. not only high-level opponents, but um, teams that play different styles mm -hmm. that can prepare us for our conference, um, you know, our conference play, like you think about last year opening up against Marquette mm -hmm. and, you know, like the pressure of the boss, you know, similar to UNC Asheville or Mike Morrell, you know, work for Shaka Smart. So, um, you know, James Perrin's my assistant. He does a lot with our schedule. So we try to play different, um, different styles, um, you know, different, different places, different venues to give our guys a, a chance during the conference. Yeah. Uh, I love talking about scheduling, especially with coaches at, at the mid-major level, because I think, it's one of those kind of aspects of college basketball that maybe doesn't get as much attention as it should. And it's so valuable. And people talk about net rankings. They talk about Ken Palm. They talk about, you know, when, especially when you're looking at Selection Sunday and, and who deserves to be in all that stuff. But scheduling yeah. plays a big role. And like, you know, a team in the Big 12, they get opportunities to, to win quad run games every single week, whereas teams in the Big South, they, they don't get that opportunity. So finding yeah. ways to to schedule those types of opponents is is insanely valuable but you also you know you can't just load up entirely on on those kind of teams either I, I love that you mentioned kind of the different style of opponents that's obviously a, a tricky piece to try to find a to try to kind of find that balance while scheduling I know you said you have staff members who do it but kind of philosophically what goes into trying to make that non-conference schedule uh, as kind of balanced competitive you know as you want it to be each season yeah, and, and a lot of people don't know there's also, you know, at different schools, especially at our level, there's a certain mark that, yeah. you know, different administrators want you to hit in terms of guarantee money. Um, so that's right. a that that's a factor in it as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, whatever your certain number is that, you know, the administration wants you to hit, yeah, you want to hit that number without having to get on flights. Right. And so, you know, that's a big that's a big thing for us and where we're located, you know, you have a lot of ACC opponents mm -hmm. and who you, who you're a quick drive to right. and, you know, us playing North Carolina, I, I think, you know, it helps with our, with our fans and our mm -hmm. alumni who we have in that area. So a lot of times we like to schedule games where we have a, a big alumni base, yeah. um, you know, Northern Virginia, we have a big alumni base and, you know, North Carolina. And so um, that, that, that's a factor as well, mm -hmm. not just, you know, when you talk, computer numbers um, sure you know the excitement that you can generate is also a big deal mm -hmm. well i have a i have a feeling you're probably going to be flying to cancun because you guys got a trip yeah. uh, heading out there yeah. this year that's extremely exciting uh, opportunity to play morgan state and uh, look like that second game will either be chicago state or, or northern colorado at that hard rock hotel out in cancun like 
How excited are you personally? How excited is the team for this opportunity? It's a, it's a really unique chance for, for a yeah. program like this, really for anybody in college basketball to get a chance to play uh, outside of the country. Well, those, and I've played in a lot of them, you know, played mm -hmm. in them, coached in them. They're, they're kind of, yeah. they're difficult because it's like, you know, you go to these places, but you also, you know, you did, it's a business trip. Sure. So you're limited on what you can do. You're limited on what you think you can do. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for us, it's just another opportunity to play some uh, some like opponents. So we mm -hmm. jumped on it. So, you know, I, I'm not looking at it where it is. Um, yeah. I'm looking at it what we can get out of it. Mm -hmm. Coach Nichols and I are going to get into the new players on this roster and how this Radford squad can build off of a phenomenal 2022-23 season. Before we get to that, though, today's episode of Locked on College Basketball is brought to you by Prize Fix. Prize Fix offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like their Taco Tuesday deals. Every Tuesday, Prize Fix offers discount select player projections up to 25% to provide you with even more value. And with the Prize Fix reboot policy, your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. So for NFL and college football top 25 matchups, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and they do not return in the second half, that player is rebooted. Folks, this is unprecedented in the daily fantasy space. Price Picks is the only company that lets you have injury insurance for these kinds of players. Beyond that, this app is super easy to use. All you do is pick two or more players and pick an over-under with that given stat. It's Thursday night football tonight. Deontay Johnson and the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Tennessee Titans. Johnson's got about 59 yards over-under. I'm taking the over. I think Pittsburgh's going to have a good passing game against Tennessee. That is an easy way to take that bet. If it comes together, you get yourself paid. Eight. So go to pricepix.com slash locked on college and use that promo code locked on college for a first deposit match of up to $100. Again, that's pricepix.com slash locked on college. Use promo code locked on college for a first deposit match of up to $100. Price picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Coach, I want to kind of transition now and talk a little bit more about uh, about the actual team and certainly about the season last year. I, one point yeah. away from being in the NCAA tournament, a, a really devastating loss to Campbell uh, keeps you out of the tournament, but you guys rebound from that, go to the CBI, end up going all the way to the semifinals, losing to Charlotte, who ended up winning the whole thing there. I mean, we're talking about a season where, if I'm not mistaken, more conference wins than total wins from the previous season. So yeah. a, a resounding success of a year. Uh, how do you carry that momentum into the next season? I mean, coming off of, again, a, a, such a close, you know, a, a, such a, a borderline making the NCAA tournament, you know, how, how do you kind of take that with you going into the next year? I think every season's a different book. Yeah. And a lot of people try to take last season and then say, OK, let's just keep writing the same book. And mm -hmm. this is how it's going to end. Um, yeah. So for us, it's just, you know, we have a lot of returners back. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are speculating, OK, well, you guys should be good. Um, mm -hmm. we're, I mean, we're a different team. Like we have, to, mm -hmm. we have to understand that the highs and lows of the season. Um, I thought we handled that really well last year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we always challenge our guys. It's a long season, so you're going to be. You're going to be – there's going to be times during the year you're going to be poisoned by accomplishment. Sure. There's going to be times where you're going to be in the valley of disappointment. How do you get out of both places and continue mm -hmm. moving forward? Those are the things that I thought we handled really well last year to, you know, mm -hmm. have a successful season. But, you know, this is going to be how we respond in certain situations that determine how good we're going to be. Yeah, and, and you mentioned having some of those guys back, and I think that's that's so key for players who went through those ups and downs. You know, you get Daquan Smith back, you get Brian Antoine back, and, and guys who were double-digit scorers in this program last year. I think Smith led, led the team. And, and in an era where, I mean, if we're being completely honest, players who lead teams in conferences like the Big South and scoring often enter the transfer portal. Like, that's something that we're seeing. It's really common the last couple of years, and for this team to return – uh, four guys who played over 20 minutes per game last year from a team that that was successful. Like yeah. in an era where continuity is rarer than I think it's ever been in college basketball, how valuable do you find that and just experience in general uh, in, in this in this kind of day and age? I think it's extremely important. I think it, <laughs> you think the people who cover college basketball, mm -hmm. their energy is spent on where guys are going. Yeah. It's always like, hey, where's this guy going? Like, it used to be mm -hmm. just um, high school kids, you know, because right. signing period, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now it's 
the energy is spent on where guys are going every year because mm -hmm. you're you know you're able to transfer so that's that's the conversation that's mm -hmm. the tension that a lot of players want is okay let me make a new graphic and figure out where i'm going okay. exactly and the guys that we have i think we've done a good job of evaluating you know mm -hmm. guys fit us and i think we create an environment every day where guys really like to be in mm -hmm. We, you know, we tell them the truth. We don't try to keep somebody here who doesn't want to be here. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we don't we don't really stress out over is this guy going to come back? Is he not? It's, I mean, mm -hmm. if you like it, great. If you don't, great. Um, I, I think you can't spend your time worrying about that. Mm -hmm. Well, another year with a lot of new players as well. We talked about the returnees, a couple guys who who you know led the team in scoring last year. That's fantastic. But also quite a few guys coming in as well. And I'd love to hear kind of your thoughts on some of the new players, a couple transfers coming in, a couple freshmen coming in. And, and you know, last year, some of the new guys who joined the team were, were some of the players who really helped impact that program in a significant way, guys who came out, came over and and shot better than they'd shot in the past. And, like, are you kind of envisioning certain guys who, who are new to this program kind of taking a, a similar leap and having a, a big and valuable role for this team? I think so. I think we've done a good job, too, with uh, those one-year grad students. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, we've we've been successful getting a few of those guys, um, and you know, with them, it's just how how fast can we blend the team together? Yeah. And I think, you know, sometimes you get those grad mm -hmm. students, and you know, they're going to shoot how they're going to shoot, they're going to pass how they're going to pass, they're going to dribble. So how do we how do we build the mentality of okay, it's about the team getting better as opposed mm -hmm. to what I'm running to or what I'm running from, and. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something that we've been able to deal with or kind of evaluate over the summer, you know, yeah. going on a foreign trip to Japan and being around these guys for an extended period of time. And, you know, just having a guy like Josiah Harris, um, mm -hmm. you know, transfer from St. Francis, Brooklyn. The big thing for us was yeah. he was number three in the country in defense rebounding. Mm -hmm. And we have Justin Archer, who's back, who's number who's number six in offense rebounding. And rebounding right. is a big thing for our program. Um, so sometimes we just, you know, we study numbers and figure out what our biggest need is, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of, if you can find somebody that's elite in one area, yeah. um, you know, that's, that's what we've been able to identify and kind of track. Yeah. I, I was kind of looking at it from a, from an offensive perspective with a guy coming in like Truth Harris, you know, somebody who, who, who yeah. shot really, really well. And, and you already have a handful of guys in your backcourt who, who shoot really well from deep, but adding somebody else, you know, being able to space the floor even more, somebody who maybe can, can be perhaps more traditional point guard. Like it feels like you're just able to kind of fit the pieces there as long as you can get those guys to kind of buy into to the system. And certainly having players who have succeeded as transfers previously, I have to imagine helps kind of be able to sell that message. Yeah, and I think that when you take transfers, especially if they have one year or two mm -hmm. years or whatever, it has to be an it has to be a, a definite need for them, or it's sure. not going to work out right. because the urgency level of a guy who has one year is different than a freshman coming in. Right, it, it may not be different. I don't know because mm -hmm. you have portal, so it's, it's the success or mm -hmm. you know you're gone or whatever. But um, the way I look at when you when you take a transfer. Or you get a transfer mm -hmm. they have two years three years you know the urgency level is different based on how many how much time they have left with right. the program. so i think that has to be evaluated too when yeah. you when you recruit yeah and, and i think um looking at your team we've seen this very they have a pretty distinct identity and i wonder yeah obviously entering your third season still kind of you know putting together roster you know your types of roster as, as you inherited a lot of players and and you know we see an offensive team that that shoots a lot we see a defensive team that there's a little bit chaotic a little bit unpredictable with traps with presses different kind of ways to attack opposing offenses and when you're evaluating and you kind of touched on it already when you're evaluating freshmen or transfers uh, how much of it is this guy already fits what we do or this guy we think can assimilate into that? And, and again, maybe it's more of a this is a two to three year development project. This is a, a guy who's going to come in right away. And how do you kind of make sure to try to mold those guys into the roles that you want them to fill in order to kind of have that same offensive and defensive identity that that we've seen for the last couple of years? I think the biggest thing, too, is, uh, you know, we're able to evaluate transfers mm -hmm. you know, junior college kids whatever yeah um, on synergy so you, you're mm -hmm. able to see them play you got a bigger sample size you may not see them live um mm -hmm. like you do you know when you recruit 
possible. But mm-hmm. I think the biggest thing for us is the interview process. I think mm-hmm. that's more important than ever before because you're getting to know people um, yeah. at a faster rate. You know, yeah. back in the day, it was I'm recruiting this kid for two years. I, you know, I know everything about him. So now the interview process is better. It is more important. And asking better questions is even more important to get to who they are as people and how, you know, you can figure out how they'll fit into what you already have. And I think that's what we've over the last two years, we've been able to have time to do that where, you know, year one, I get the job as the second to last job field. And mm-hmm. you know, I'm just trying to, you know, piece together the roster really fast. Um, so, you know, we've been able to do that a lot more and I think it's been helpful. Looking at the conference as a whole, you know, we saw a handful of very competitive teams last year coming into this year. Again, a significant amount of roster turnover for for quite a few of the teams in the league. Just uh, how are you feeling knowing, you know, where you guys were last year and what the roster is looking like? Like, how are you feeling the competition level is going to be in the conference in general? Uh, and just kind of what are your thoughts on, on being in this conference and coaching against these, these programs the last couple of years? I think the hard part is at – you know, especially in the big South, you may have some guys that are transferring from, you know, quote unquote, higher level. Sure. And then, so you don't, you, you don't know how they're going to respond to anything. You know, and first they have guys in the big South going up and you don't know how they're going to respond to anything. Mm-hmm. So what we're trying to do right now is we're trying to say, okay, this guy has a good name and he's supposed to be good and, and, you know, kind of project how we think they're going to be. But, I think, especially in the Big South, you're you're concerned about the guys that teams have returned it mm-hmm. because you've seen it, right? You know, you've seen what Drew Pitt does. You 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 know, you've seen what Taj Kelly does. You, you've mm-hmm. seen all these guys, and so you really not trying to evaluate who people who people you know picked up. You're trying mm-hmm. to evaluate who people you know who you've already seen. So I don't know. It's it's, it's difficult because so much roster turn up year to year that. You just kind of trying to evaluate coaching styles and what they value, and then you know trying to try to read it where it is. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think every team who gets the chance to play against Drew Pember is going to be worried about him because that guy is, is does not seem like a fun assignment defensively. Uh, I, I think the most underrated part of him is how many fouls he draws. Yeah. So so then you know they're in the bonus early, and um, you know you're fouling some other guys and they're good for throw shooters too. So I think that's the most underrated part of, you know, who he is as a player. Closing out today's show, hearing Coach Nichols' thoughts on the NIT no longer giving spots to regular season champions. All of that coming up after a word from today's sponsor, FanDuel. Score early and often this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 in your pocket if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, folks, there is no better time than right now to get in on the action. This app is very easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. And since we're getting into college basketball season, you can start putting some of that money down on some projections, including some final four bets. Duke is plus 330. Same with Kansas. Purdue is plus 430. And if you're feeling extra spicy, loving John Calipari's squad down in Lexington, Kentucky is plus 500 right now to make it to the final four. So folks, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the college basketball season. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. Coach, last thing I want to talk about is the recent story that came out about the NIT and, and they're no longer guaranteeing spots to those teams that win their conference regular season but don't win uh, in the conference tournament. You know, a, a spot that Radford certainly seems like they they could be in the future. Uh, obviously, a, t- a team that went to the CBI last year had an opportunity to still play some postseason basketball, but this NIT announcement comes right before the season started. We've seen some, some other mid-major uh, athletic directors, presidents, whomever, kind of coming out and speaking frustratingly about this decision kind of being made at this time and and somewhat in response to the new Fox postseason tournament. And I'd love to, as somebody who who played in the Big 12 and, and has now, or in the, who played Power 5, Power 6 basketball, um, 
who is now kind of in this opportunity as a yeah. mid-major coach, just kind of your thoughts on, on that recent change. I don't, I don't know the real reason why the change I could speculate. Mm -hmm. but I, do know this. I, 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 I know that if you look at it, when the, when the transfer window opens, mm -hmm. you know, select Sunday or whatever, it, the window's not as long as it used to be. So now you're wanting guys to make faster decisions. You want them, they're going to make fast decisions now because they have to get in the portal. They, they can still, you know, pull on their decision, but you're going to have the NIT scrambling. Yeah. Because what's going to happen is a lot of these coaches are going to go to these teams and they're going to say, hey, you play this. And a lot of these student athletes have been in the portal mentally for months. Mm -hmm. So they really to play especially you know at the higher level and you know some schools you know south whatever are excited to play mm -hmm. and so it's it what it's done is it's going to create more work for them where yeah. you think a team wants to play in it and then last minute you got four four dudes who want to go into the portal mm -hmm. and now they're like well i don't want to play in it if nobody wants to play mm -hmm. and so i think they may have thought they fixed a problem that I don't know what the problem was, <laughs> but I think it's going to cause more problems for them. It's going to create more work for them later. You know, so be a lot of people staying up late trying to figure out, okay, what team are we going to put in here? I think you're yeah. absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see what happens, but, uh, you know, I, I think and this thing, I think there's a lot of things changing in college, especially I'm just talking about college basketball. There's a lot of things changing in college basketball. They're not giving coaches, players time to adjust to the changes. Mm -hmm. So every year you hear about, okay, we'll change this, we'll change this. I, I never remember hearing about this many drastic changes in the short time frame. It's unbelievable how many changes there have been. I think, I mean, you absolutely nailed it with, and I mean, NIL is this massive, you know, like completely structure changing thing in college athletics. And it happens alongside the transfer portal. It happens alongside that extra year of COVID eligibility, which is, you know, it, it's short term, but still was a big thing that happened kind of at the same time. And, and now you have this just, you know, I mean, we've seen a lot of stories about this of coaches who are, are burning out faster and are struggling because it's a 24-7 job and there's no off season at all. And, you know, you I, I follow Gonzaga very closely. That's where I went to school. And they had, you know, a player join the team on September 23rd this year. That is insane <laughs> to be happening. And, and, you know, and that's happening at tons of programs all over the place. And it's just, I, I just wonder how coaches are, are able to, uh, to kind of keep up with an industry that, uh, like you said, I don't think has ever undergone this many changes uh, in a short period of time that we've seen from the last few years. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's, it's, it's absolutely nuts. Coach, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I'm excited to watch some Radford basketball, excited to check out this team uh, against Carolina on Monday and, and looking forward to uh, what will hopefully be another very successful season for you guys uh, uh, out over there in Virginia. Andy, I appreciate you. Appreciate your support as well. Folks, that is going to wrap us up for today. Thank you so much to Coach Darius Nichols for coming on to the show to talking about this Radford basketball program. We got a first mailbag edition of Locked On College Basketball coming your way on Friday, so definitely look out for that in your feed wherever you get your podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen or your first watch of the day. We got real basketball games to discuss as soon as next week. I am so excited for the season to be coming back. Uh, join us on Discord if you have not done so yet. There is a link in the show notes. You can click there. You get access to uh, conversations going on around college basketball 24-7. Thank you so much for listening, and until tomorrow, peace out.